mockingbird And if that mockingbird won't sing Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pitway. Today on the show I'm going to be showing you the results of the Ratworks Reaper uh, rifle review. Uh, and here's the Ratworks Reaper. As you'll come on to hear about a little later on, this started life as my BSA Ultra SE. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about its characteristics when it was a BSA Ultra SE a little later on. So, looking at the front of the rifle, you'll see this has got a nice shroud fitted now. This is the Ratworks version 1.2 shroud. Uh, this is not the finished model. Uh, there is going to be another model, uh, what Phil Crampton's uh, designing at the moment, which is going to be even better than this. But as you'll see a little later on, this is just about silent. There's hardly any noise whatsoever comes out the uh, muzzle, and the only noise you do hear is the hammer click, and that's all it is, just a click. Underneath, you'll see I've got an old Scorpion cylinder, uh, and on the end of the Scorpion cylinder, I've got the new Tench, air filler uh, and it's got obviously a little bung there you can take off and put back on to protect uh, from dust and stuff getting inside your quick fill and at the end of the scorpion cylinder just here we've got the tench regulator uh, which obviously regulates each shot towards the back you'll see there's been some engraving done and it says ratworks reaper uh, and underneath this is a scorpion stock which has been dipped by hydrographics. You can see there's the uh, Grim Reaper sign here. Uh, and if I turn the rifle round, you've also got the Grim Reaper, a large bolt here, which makes cycling uh, the rifle uh, a lot easier. Underneath, you can see the Rowan Engineering custom trigger here. Uh, and this is a really nice trigger unit. Uh, it gives me a lot of uh, adjustment. Uh, and I like a nice fine second stage and this allows me uh, to actually have that fine stage. On top uh, I've got a Hawk Sports HD and this is the 4 to 12 by 50 AO model uh, and IR if you want to use it here with illuminated reticle and I think you get red uh, and green mill dots. Towards the back of the Scorpion stock which is a new Scott stock which is ambidextrous uh, you can see I've got uh, an adjustable butt pad uh, so I can fit it to get my scope alignment and eye alignment perfectly which it is uh, and on the front end of the stock I've got a Deben tilting bipod and this is a 9 to 13 inch so you can see I can uh, tilt it uh, and get a nice level cross there uh, when laid prone so inside the rifle then it's been fully tuned by Phil Crampton at the Ratworks uh, and service so all the o-rings and everything like that would have been replaced uh, the hammer is a lightweight hammer system uh, which gives me a quicker lock time uh, and the rifle's also been short stroked uh, to help assist having a very quick lock time. All that means is by the time I've pulled the trigger and probably wobbled the pellets on the way already left uh, the end of the shroud and on the way to the target so accuracy is not going to be impaired by me uh, shooting from a bad technique and wobbling because so, it's already left uh, and already on route to the target. It's done some other bits and bobs with it and the valve system inside has been uh, played with and tuned so uh, what that allows uh, me to do is put either heavy pellet in, something like a Bisley Magnum or a lighter pellet, uh, maybe a JSB Exact at 8.4 grain uh, and there's not going to be much power variation between so uh, it's still going to be uh, around about 11, 11 to 11, 3 foot pounds no matter which pellet I put in and that's quite a clever bit of jiggery pokery uh, what Phil's done. As you'll see later on, uh, it's a really nice rifle, it's very accurate uh, and the shot count using the uh, Scorpion cylinder and the tench regulator uh, is quite staggering but we'll talk all, all about that a little bit later. Now I'm just going to show you a little bit of the custom work, what Phil's done on my magazine. Now as a twisted magazine you can see it's just a normal 177 calibre BSA magazine with a rubber o-ring. Uh, but if I hold it up to the light and spin it round, you can see each one of the holes now have got an edge on. And that's all ten holes. Uh, and the reason Phil's done that is because obviously a pellet's got uh, a skirt and the edge, uh, like it is, when you put the pellet in, the edge will help it to actually seat better in the magazine. 
So if it's seated better in the magazine, when you cock the rifle and push the probe forward to actually put a pellet in the breech, hopefully it will seat that pellet a lot better uh, and the same uh, each time, which will give you a good, a good accuracy. So I'll just show you. So fit it in and then just twist it like so and you can see the, uh, as, it, as you twist it, the, the edge it helps the pellet. It's quite hard to do because I'm uh, obviously trying to do this looking through a viewfinder. So I'll put the pellet in and then twist it like so and each one of the pellets are now sitting basically exactly the same. So it's not a massive uh, bit of customization, it's only a little bit but that little bit obviously does uh, make an effort and at the end of the day it's accuracy we want and you can see that pellet is absolutely perfect in that magazine ready to be loaded. So here we are in David's man cave and we're going to do a bit of chrono in, in a little while uh, with some different pellet brands uh, and David's looking at the Reapers, it's the first time he's had his hands on it today uh, so what do you what do you think? It's nice, yeah. It's really lovely. It's got a nice uh, that dipping they've done is really good. You can hold it nice. But what impresses me the most is listen to this. That's yeah. it. That's cocked. Yeah. And then it's mad, isn't it? It's it's really really quiet. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be anything coming out of the actual muzzle, no, does it? No. It seems to be the actual yeah. click is somewhere in here. Yeah. Just do that but again. That's, that's yeah, and now fire it, and it seems to come from here. There's nothing, there's nothing coming from the muzzle. And just so I can show you, it obviously there's nothing in it. Look, the rifle's full. <laughs> and uh, as you'll see in a little while, uh, when we uh, actually chrono it, it's doing round about 11 foot pounds. <laughs> That's quiet, isn't it? <laughs> it's quiet, yeah. It's quieter than a barrack silencer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's that. It's just effortless. Yeah, it's brilliant. He's done a good job. Right, we're going to do a 10 shot string over the F1 chrono with a Reaper using JSB Exacts at 4.53 millimeters. It is raining, so hopefully that won't affect the sensors too much. 775.2. Error. 778.2 777.5 dead and 775.5 there was an error so that's nine shots Let's pause now and see uh, how consistent they are. So originally I wanted to do a 10 shot string over the chronic but as you saw one of the shots didn't go over both sensors so I got an error reading so we ended up with 9. That's fine, nine's plenty. So the lowest reading we got out of the 9 shots was 774.7 feet per second and the highest reading was 778.2 feet per second. That's using 8.4 grain uh, JSB exacts. So you take the lowest from the highest and it gives you a really small total deviation between them nine shots of just 3.5 feet per second. So that's spot on. You know, it's as good as you want from a, a top end, really expensive uh, air rifle, what's been regulated. So I'm really pleased with that. Anyway, I added all nine of the shots up in feet per second and then divided them by nine to give me an average feet per second. And it worked out at 776.21 feet per second. I then changed that from a foot, uh, feet per second into foot pounds and it worked out at 11.37 foot pounds so absolutely spot on a little bit more powerful than it was before it went away which doesn't really bother me too much uh, and exactly where Phil says it was before he sent the rifle back to me so spot on there Right, I've almost got the uh, Sports HD spot on uh, I've put the target out at 33 yards or 30 meters uh, and I've just done about three or four shots and they're just about landing on top of each other. I'm going to turn the camera around now 
and go down to the target, so you're seeing the target, uh, and then I'm just going to shoot another uh, three shot group uh, and then fine adjust it uh, to try and get it as accurate as I can. What I want at this range is for the pellet to basically land on top of each other if possible. Okay, I'm going to zoom in then to the target, which is a piece of paper. It's got some little dots on uh, what I printed out. The dots are around about 6mm, so just a little bit bigger than a 2.2 calibre pellet. Uh, and because this barn is quite dark when you're looking through your scope, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, pick out. That was a smack on, that was the middle dot. Right in the middle it looks of it. And again. There you go. That's uh, bang on, so I don't need to adjust it. That's uh, three shots. Made a tiny, tiny uh, one old group at 33 yards. Okay, I've come down to the target end now, and you can see I've written on the target. Uh, I'm going to zoom in slowly so not to lose focus. And what you will see is I've actually placed uh, a new 177 pellet in the actual hole, what was made. Uh, by the three shots and you can see uh, it's not far off being actually a perfect group so uh, it would be an actual perfect pellet on pellet. Right, you can see now I've moved back as far as I can do and if I tap on the door at the side of me I can't go back any further it's raining outside anyway so I'll zoom in and you'll see the target see there's a little six mil dot uh, red dot, that's what I'm going to put the crosshair on. I'll come round the uh, back of the camera, uh, and I'll put a five pence piece at the size of it, side of it, and you can see it's probably half the size of a five p. Absolutely uh, buried by the five pence. Give you some idea. You can actually see the actual where the pellet holes are. Two there and one there. If I was to put uh, that pellet, which is a fresh pellet, try and get it into the hole. There, that's the size uh, of the group. So three shots at 45, two in there, uh, and one just touching it. Which I think most people would be happy with uh, this distance with their rifle. Uh, so I'm at back at 45 yards, and uh, you can see I've rested my plank down now. And on top, there's three bottle tops, but instead of standing them up, uh, I've laid them flat. I'm going to have an attempt to hit in each one of them. Uh, when they are laid flat. I did make the two clicks uh, right. You see that was absolutely spot on. Now this one is a really thin one. But you can see the Reaper's just absolutely nailing them. Uh, to be honest, that's just three out of three late flat, uh, and that was simple. Uh, it's so accurate, it's unbelievable. Right, I'm going to try and get this laser onto a. Uh, uh, you see, 88 yards. I zoom in you'll see a board and on there I've stuck one of them Firebird reactive targets so I've got the Reaper down here on the bipod uh, I'm gonna have to probably hit him off for a tiny little bit of wind uh, but hopefully I can get somewhere quite close if not hit this I'm gonna try times seven I'm gonna guess between five and six mil dots so it might need a, a few shots 
just to guess the wind. Uh, just set the parallax. Well, I can hear it hitting the uh, wood. Oh, I think I hit it, but it didn't. Uh, it didn't go off. I'll go check that. So you've just seen me have a go at 88 to 9 meters at the Firebird target, and you'd have seen uh, I was guessing between five and six mil dots. At five mil dots and a mil dot of right hand side. Uh, I saw the target fall off the wood which was screwed in uh, and you can see it has been hit just on the edge right. that's times 42 extended zoom as close as I can get uh, and let's see if we can uh, hit this firebird target hopefully within a couple of shots Oh, and again! Second shot. Didn't go off. Right. Right, this time you saw five mil dots of old over on time seven. Mil dot of right hand side. That was the first one, you see. Uh, and same again. Just about in the identical uh, same place. Uh, top in both of them. You can see as well, uh, you know, this is 88, 89 yards, and look what that uh, 177 pellet uh, is doing at 11.37 foot-pound to a piece of a uh, piece of uh, metal, aluminium, or whatever it is. You know, there's still quite a bit of energy there. And you can see I'm still in the same location. I'm not going to bother with the uh, rangefinder. Still at the exact same distance. That's as close as I can get. Oh, I don't believe it. Second shot again for the third time and it's still not gone off. That was only half a mil dot of wind this time because it's dropped the breeze. That's staggering accuracy. But, uh, you know, them firebirds they don't seem to be going off. Well, as you saw, uh, three shots. There's the first one. There's the second one. And that one should have definitely gone off. Uh, you can see again, quite a bit of damage on the back. Should have gone off. So that's. So you can see, I'm not doing any sort of like sleight of hand. Three firebird targets, all at 88, 89 yards. Two shots uh, in a breeze, which I'm pretty pleased with. Uh, but they haven't gone off. So what I've done here is uh, I've put a piece of plastic, what I've found now, uh, exactly at the same distance, so 88, 89 yards, where the Firebird exploding targets were. Uh, but I've kept the older there, uh, what these actually sat in. Uh, and I'm gonna put five mil dots uh, in the center of it, on time seven, and shoot a three shot group, and just to see uh, how the rifle groups with uh, these pellets at this range. It's just more out of interest, so don't, I won't ever be shooting at vermin, it's just more targets, and just to see how the uh, rifle does. Uh, group at this range in this slight breeze There's no use me putting the camera on uh, the target because there's nothing for you to see uh, And some people if this turns out to be a good three-shot group some people uh, will probably say that I fixed it uh, and I was shooting the gun uh, And then I moved forward and shot a group at 30 yards or whatever. That's entirely up to you All I can say is whatever I'm showing is the truth uh, whether you believe it or not. That's uh, your own uh, decision
can definitely hear it in the plastic anyway. And the last shot. That's uh, three shots. Uh, I'm going to have a look at them. Okay, I've moved the camera and tripod down to the target end. Uh, and if I zoom in, uh, you can see the group. Now that group has turned out uh, slightly better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and I realise now, now I'm sat down here, uh, because of the shrubs of the trees to my front, to the right hand side of the camera, so over there, uh, there's no breeze coming through here whatsoever and it's pretty still. But anyway, what I was doing, I was putting the fifth what I call the fifth aim point, uh, which is the start of the post uh, in the Hawk Sports HD uh, on time seven, just on the, where the screw would be in the center, uh, knowing that the pellets were dropping right any, uh, left anyway, because when I was shooting these targets, uh, I was having to aim here, and you saw three of them I hit. Uh, so the aim points have now landed exactly level, which they would do because that's what I was hitting. Uh, but you can see they're nice and tight, really. Uh, I should say that's probably an inch, maybe just a tiny bit under an inch. This is the 40 mil one what I shot, uh, and you can hopefully see that 40 mil covers it easy. Uh, I've got a one penny piece here. I haven't got a five pence piece. It's nowhere near under a five pence piece, so I'm not ever claiming it will be. Uh, but if I put the one pence piece there, it covers two. Uh, if I push it over a little bit, almost uh, two and a half of the uh, pellets. Now like I've said, uh, because there was no way of actually showing this group being shot, because even if uh, I did put the camera actually on this plastic, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the actual impact anyway. So whether you believe me or whether you don't believe me, that's entirely up to you. I've got nothing, to, no reason to lie. You did see uh, when I was aiming at these, three, three of these was hit, I think second shot each time. Uh, so, you know, I'm good enough to hit these, so why can't I uh, produce a group like that? It's all entirely up to you. But for those who do believe, this is what you can get uh, from a, uh, a Ratworks Reaper when Phil's worked on it. 89 yards, pretty outstanding accuracy, and I think any uh, top-end PCP, and I'm talking any now, uh, at this range, if they could produce that, uh, whoever shot it would be, uh, be happy, just as I am. That's how the reef does it. That's it. Clear down and out. That was probably short of 50 metres. See if I zoom out. This is the night side of the swim, the reaper. Uh, in day mode. Well there we are then, you see it's getting a, a little bit lighter now and I just thought I'd show you, this is the first ever bunny uh, what the reaper's has taken uh, since it come back from the rat works and as you saw it was about 45-50 yards really nice clean shot, pellet uh, placement was absolutely spot on exactly where I wanted it in the brain uh, you can see the reaper's deadly accurate it's nice conditions today, probably can see from the uh, garden behind me there is a slight breeze but it's not too much uh, and from where I was shooting, I was pretty shaded anyway, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. Fuck me, did that nail it? It's so quiet, isn't it? It's a tick. Tick. Here's a really long shot, but I haven't got really time to focus it. Right, I've moved the camera now onto the tripod. Uh, 
a little bit up the edge where you've just seen me take that second rabbit and I reckon that were between 50 and 55 meters uh, in all honesty now there's a little bit of breeze this way but along this edge uh, and where I was off the bipod laid prone uh, it's pretty still so I'm gonna go up there now pick it up uh, it did fall in a little bit of a, uh, a bit of dip in the ground so when I shot it I couldn't actually uh, see it from the prone position but I did see it go up and come down I think it will look nice in a bit of slow motion that so when I edit that uh, off the PV1000 which you'll see the camera is not very good color when using night sight in the day mode or just as it's getting light uh, because obviously it's not really designed uh, to be used as much in the day but uh, you'll get hopefully you'll get a good clear enough picture to see the rabbit being shot and we're going to see if we can pick it up now looks like there's been a fox up here as well some fox scat nice rabbit Uh, nice clean rabbit here look, fresh to shot uh, and I'll just show you the placement look just at the back of the ear uh, going straight through uh, and coming out the other side uh, where, which was obviously through its brain so I'm really pleased with that hopefully you can see that there straight through the back of the uh, brain that's why it went over, jumped up bit of nerves but that'll be a, another rabbit what the uh, landowner will be happy to see gone